Hello, and welcome to Jersey Made. I'm your host, Luke Porco, and this is the show that gives you a one-on-one interview with a notable sp- sports personality that calls New Jersey home. Today, we'll give you an inside look at their upbringing, how they got into the sports world, and most importantly, what makes them Jersey Made. You may know today's guest from his work with Barstool Sports as a blogger and the co-host of the Yankees podcast, The Short Porch. Here he is, Eric Hubbs. Hubs, so happy to have you on the show. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, what's going on, man? Uh, it's silly to have me on like a Jersey made podcast, I feel like, because I don't consider myself any anywhere notable to like get on that type of thing. But pleasure to pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have the conversation. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, just just give me a little background, like, you know, growing up in Manalapan, New Jersey. What was like, you know, some fun like lessons you learn or any fun stories that kind of shaped who you are today? lessons I learned I don't know if I learned too many lessons more just like trial and error um but I had a blast in Alp and uh, I think we had a pretty good growing up there a lot of fun stuff um specifically like the, my immediate like most fun childhood memories come from uh summer camp at the rec center and in Manalpa and we just like basically every kid like you either went away for summer camp or you stayed and you you would go through like the schools and it was just pure chaos and like the best way possible. And like your parents would drop you off. They give you lunch money or, uh, you know, they, they give you their own whatever. And it's just a free for all from there. Well, you know, gambling on stuff and just, you know, it's just whatever we wanted to do for like six, seven hours. It was great. Uh, it's what we look forward to basically every year. Like, I, I don't even know if that sounds like fun by the way I'm saying it, but it was genuinely a blast. And it was like, just the way, if you didn't do that, I generally don't know how you spent your summers as a kid. And then when you get old enough, you become the counselors. So then you get basically paid to do all that stuff because you don't really actually counsel the kids. You are just basically a quote unquote supervisor, but like you're not really a supervisor. So yeah, it was great. I, I like that stuff. I love playing sports. I would play sports literally. I play you know, spring baseball. I'd play fall ball. I play basketball. My life just always revolved around sports. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I love an Alp and it was, it was great. It was great for as long as I, I could do it until I had to get out of there and cut that commute down and like i couldn't i couldn't take the bus anymore to the city it was very brutal but uh no manalpin manalpin's great i was like i actually went home uh last week so yeah it's, it's always nice to be back love la rosa that's also another thing la rosa manalpin is to die for unbelievable mac and cheese there oh nice <laughs> yeah so obviously you mentioned playing sports growing up um and obviously since you're the host of short porch did what came first in a sense like were you, did you become a Yankee fan because of your playing baseball or was it like vice versa? Did you get into baseball? Oh, no, no. My dad put a Yankee pinstripe thing on me at like day three of life, I think. Um, Smart man. So, uh, yeah, the, there wasn't much choice there. He let me run free with any other sports team, but I had to be a Yankee fan. And uh, no, it was always the Yankees. And then baseball was just the love that came through that because we're always watching Yankee games. Um, and I just I've always loved the game. I could watch. I could sit down and watch baseball from 1 p.m. till 1 in the morning, you know, straight through. I have no problem doing that. But uh, And I also love playing. I played my entire childhood up through, like, halfway to high school. And, like, you know, then I played, like, softball, uh, intramural softball in, like, college or whatever. So uh, I've always loved the game and, and been around it as much as I could. Nice. And to mention, there have been a few number of pro athletes and sports media types that come out of Manalapan, one of them being the uh, Tennessee Titans tight end Anthony Ferkser, who I've seen you have tweeted about several times. Like, yeah. have you been able to connect with him? Like, after he's made it, like on Twitter or Instagram, or whatever. And like, yeah, you have any- he said he was a year younger than me. I want to say, but we were in the same Spanish class, maybe my senior year. And I'm not the smartest person, and he went to Harvard, so I would always be peeping over at his desk. I'd be looking at his desk, you know whatever it was to get, to get by. Cause those, some of those Spanish classes were hard. Once you get like in senior year, high school, whatever, you're taking it for years. So when he went off against the Pats and basically eliminated them by himself in the playoffs, I have a bunch of friends who are friendly with his older brother and, and they're, they're just all together. They're, they're all linked together. And uh, I, I think I wrote a blog about like how I, the kid I cheated off of in Spanish class now just took out the Patriots, something like that. But no, it's a great kid. I, I love, I love, yeah, it, it's really uh it's crazy too with him. He wasn't, he, he didn't even want to play football. He was a basketball player. He, he, but then they were like, you know, you're really athletic and we could use you on the team. Can you catch a football? Then he, I'm pretty sure just broke the touchdown record like 
in both years he played football for, for Manalpin and then goes on to Harvard and does his thing there. I think he wanted to play basketball there too. And he only went there because they gave him a chance to play basketball. But I think it was safe to say the football worked out for him for him, no mm-hmm. problem. He's he's an up and comer for sure. For sure. And you'll and you'll always have that story no matter as long as his career goes on, you'll still have that story uh cheating on him in Spanish class. Yeah, that's my claim uh, to fame. Cheating on Anthony Verser in mm-hmm. Spanish class. Well wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great story. And um, going off of that, there have been a f- few players from Jersey that play for the Yankees. And one of them, for example, that you guys have interviewed on the short porch and have talked to is Mike Ford. And um, what was it like, not only like interviewing and like getting to connect with a Yankee player, but someone from the same state as you? And like, you know, were you able to yeah. like, you know, talk about that with each other? Yeah, Forty's great. I, I still I still t- stay in touch with him, um, even when he's not on the Yankees. He's, he's still bouncing around trying to figure out his thing. But um, he came on the pod when we were at the old office and things were just all a mess because we were we basically our the first office I worked with Barstool where it was now our old office. It was just we overgrew it within seconds. Like there were like 150 people working in an office that just was way too small for that. And so I remember him coming in one of the final days we were there. It was just a mess, but it was like kind of just as he was, you know, getting his, his feet down in the majors and, 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 you know, you know, getting a few home runs under his belt and whatever. I forget the year, maybe 2019, 2018. And uh, he was just great. Just such a humble kid. And the Jersey part is great too. And our producer TJ knew uh, cause he's from Princeton, I believe. And he knew of the like sandwich shop, I guess that they would always go to a super popular around there. And it was like fat sandwiches, you know, which is a Jersey trademark, I feel like. And they they had like a very similar like favorite fat sandwich, which was funny. But no, Ford's been great. I hope he lands on his feet soon in, in, mm. in the majors. But yeah, just an incredibly humble guy. I love that he's from Jersey, obviously. And it was cool to see him like do his thing for a little bit with the Yankees and help them win some games. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a good story too, you know, watching him play. And like I said, I, do, uh, I too hope he finds a team and can stick with stick in the league for a little while. And, um, yeah. What one way you try to like rep Jersey, like wherever you go, like whether it be like at bar store, or, like when you're away from the tri-state area, like what's one way every day you try to rep Jersey. One day I try to rep one thing. I, try to... I don't know. I, I always try to just make note that I like, like people when they ask about, well, first of all, and this is gonna be controversial. I feel like on the Jersey made podcast, but I always say I'm from central New Jersey. And I know that a lot of people think that doesn't exist. So that is one thing they were like, you're either from North or South. And I'm like, man, try and tell me where Manalpin is in North or South. Cause it's not North. It's not South. It's definitely not South. So it, it just has to be central. So that is one thing where like, I, when I say I'm from Jersey or people ask me about Jersey, I make sure they know that central New Jersey is a real thing because put on a map, be that, where am I from? You would say central New Jersey. If I described you where I live. So I always try to make that so clear. And it bothers me when people say that Central Jersey doesn't exist. I don't understand what they're saying. Is it dead center in the center? <laughs> no, one thing, I don't know. I, I love the Jersey Shore, obviously. I think it's such a, it was such a cool thing growing up being like, tw- I was like 25, 30 minutes. You just take 18 or whatever and you get there. You know, the all the bars down there, whether, you know, um, Point Pleasant or Seaside or Belmar, you know, just being so close to there. Very cool. And obviously the whole Jersey Shore TV show, you know, being in the midst of all that. And during the peak of it, you know, like, living in Jersey and going, I don't know if it was in high school or middle school, or whatever, but all that, you know, that was very popular across the entire country. And I happened to be living in Jersey at the time. So that was cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And I'm glad you're strongly able to put central, trying to put central Jersey on the map for sure. Yeah. man. Yeah. And who's the biggest like influence, whether it be personally, professionally that from New Jersey, that's inspired or helped or shaped you in any way. Biggest influence. Well, honestly, my sixth grade teacher, his name was Mr. Robleski. Forget his first name. I hope he's still kicking around there. He was a little bit older, but he would always like push me, motivate me to like, hey, you need to do something in sports. You need to like you have a good passion for this. Like you need to really go for it with this thing. And in fourth or sixth grade elementary school, I went to Lafayette. This is a place called Lafayette Middle School. And uh, fourth grade. So they would do like morning announcements. This is like 2004 and they would do morning announcements. So they do the weather, you know, PTA announcements, all that type of stuff. And I went up to the principal, Mr. Reed. And I was like, Hey man, like 
can I do like sports, like one minute of sports over the morning announcements, whatever. And he's like, he was immediately interested because I think he was very bored with what they were saying on the PT. Like it, PTA announcements go on. You just hope they go on long enough so that like school doesn't actually start because school doesn't start until those are over. So, but I thought of like, Hey, like let's make this interesting. Let's make this fun. Like people love sports or whatever. So he gave me a shot. I tried out in front of him or whatever after, uh, you know, I gave it a few days to think about what I was going to say and how I was going to do it. He loved it. So we started that. I did Mondays and Fridays and he gave me two minutes. And I would just go over the morning announcements over the loudspeaker or whatever. And I'd talk about it for two minutes. And you know, I, re- I would only recap like local stuff, like baseball, hockey, NBA, whatever. Straight up just like not giving takes because honestly, you don't have enough time for takes. It's just like, it's almost like what you hear over like WFAN or whatever, like the, the hourly like updates. updates. I basically do that. And um, so that was a hit. Like people loved it. And then fifth grade, we advanced the technology to get a camera like a live so basically like a tv a tv network whatever you know so like it no longer was just audio it was me in front of a camera and then we got a teleprompter so they were like investing all they were oh, like okay me. this is a hit let's let's just go here so that was cool then a girl tried to do it on wednesdays to like break it up and be like, and it, she was so bad she just quit on her own no one even had to tell her to stop after that. no one was gonna fire her because we weren't even you wouldn't even be fired you weren't being paid for anything she's doing for fun but she realized she was so bad. She's like, all right, I can't do Monday. I can't just, this is too bad compared to what you're doing, whatever. So then I took over and in sixth grade, we kept it rolling again and it was awesome. And for those three years, and once I got to sixth grade, I had that Robusti guy as a teacher. And he was just like, this is like, the teachers loved it. They were like, when you're like sixth grade, you move on. I was, I would go to a middle school, seventh and eighth grade. So there was no more. They were devastated. I remember like, I, I, I was close enough to the school where I could walk every day. So I would go back and visit here and there, just say how the teachers goes friendly with them. They were like, man, it just was never the same. Cause I, I, te- I picked a successor when I left. Like I had like a whole looking back, very like egotistical to like pick my own successor, have like this whole competition, all that. Who do I think I was? But um, I picked some kid and he just wasn't apparently like, I, I thought he was good enough. It just wasn't. And they were just like, man, it just wasn't the same. But going back to the original question, the guy, Mr. Obluski, he would just be like, you got to go to Syracuse or whatever it is. You got to just keep pushing with this thing. Honestly, when I went to middle school, I dropped the whole thing because they kind of weren't down for it, and I, we just didn't do it. So it kind of died there, but still ended up going to Syracuse and rolling into whatever I got right now. So he, he pointed me in the right direction, and his words guided me to like, hey, like, don't just settle for like a, a normal, you know, business job or whatever. Like, you can do something else with this. So I've done that. Wow. And look where it's taking you, man. Yeah. And that's, that's a great story. It's, and kind of leads me into my next question too. Um, going back, like if you could go back in time to like, you know, younger Eric Hubs or even sixth grader Eric Hubs doing the announcements, what would you tell him about your career now? And like, what advice would you give him? Like, Don't change a thing. Don't change. alter one thing. Cause it all worked out. <laughs> it's all wor- working out. Maybe not work where I don't want to say that, but it's, it's like, I could never imagine even in college, you go back to college, Eric, a freshman year, not knowing what he wants to do. Sophomore year, still not knowing what he wants to do. Like Sparstool, but like could never see himself there. You know, it doesn't think he could stand out enough. Whatever you did, it worked out. There were some speed bumps along the way, you know, basically almost fell out of Syracuse the first, first year or whatever. Cause I just could not get to, I just was not a morning guy and they kept giving me morning classes and it just wasn't working. Um, but whatever, it worked out. Like just don't change a thing. And yeah, you're going to love what you end up doing. So, because I do, I wake up every day. I feel like that's the people always ask me like the best thing of working at Barcelona. I genuinely love working there. I love getting up every day. Like I think that's such a rarity with a job these days is like wanting to go to work, not dreading it. Like my old job before this, completely dreaded until the moment I walked in and then dreaded even more doing it. But no, what I do now is great. And so wouldn't change a thing. That's great. Great to hear. And thanks for answering those questions. Those are some great answers. Now we're going to move on to the second part of the interview. We're going to play a little fun game called Jersey's Best. I'm going to read some open-ended questions about some of your favorite things from New Jersey. And you, and Hubs is going to finish the sentence. All right, so let's go. The best part of New Jersey is so hard. it could be anything. Like, I, you know what? And it's it's a bad answer because it's not exactly Jersey, 
but I love how it's so close to everything. Like I can get to the New York city if I want to in an hour and a half from where I live. If I really wanted to, not that I really want to, but I could get to Philadelphia if I want to really quick. I can go down to OC Maryland. It's a four hour drive. You know, like you're just in relate, you're in the center of everything. And you've got your own great stuff here with the beaches, the Jersey shore bars, like, all that. If, if I want to give you a Jersey answer, I give you bar a, because I loved going to bar a when I was like kind of in my low twenties, not so much anymore. I, I also live in the city, but bar a was a blast when I was like coming home from college. Like you go every Tuesday. Oh my God. You want, I, I just haven't come across another place like that where it's like so cheap, awesome, like by the beach, all that. But I think the vicinity of how it's in the epicenter, like I can get to Yankee stadium. If I wanted to an hour and a half, you can just do anything you want. So that's what I generally love about it. Uh, that's a fantastic answer. And it's true. Like Jersey is like right in that track where you could pretty much get to anywhere. And it's fortunate to have, cause not too many people in other States can really say the same. Right. Like so. some people like to get to New York city, whatever. It's like a one year thing, you know, you can only do it cause you're so far away. Whereas like, yeah. no, nah, I can just do whatever I want, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're lucky to be in this area where we can do that. Cause I know people haven't even gone to, been in New York City in their life. Right, and for sure. So that's, yeah. But anyway, so next question um, is the best beach in New Jersey is? Now, this isn't, I'm not the greatest person. I'm not a beach guy, per se. Like, I don't like no. actually, I'm team pool way more than team beach. I just don't like sand, like getting stuck on your feet or whatever. But what was a good one? Was Point Pleasant good? I think Point Pleasant's a, a solid. I think we went there as, as a family, like a ton when I was younger. Belmar, I think, was pretty good. I'd give you one of those. Um, although, what's really south? I'm trying to think what the really south one is. Um, I went there for senior year prom weekend. I can't remember. But I'll give you Belmar slash Point Pleasant. I feel like they're close enough to each other. I can give you that answer. All right. Sounds good. I'm just and not a beach guy. So that just, there, that, you know. No problem. That's still a good answer. You're still able to give a good answer, though. So the best pizza spot in New Jersey. Oh, I feel like this is a controversial one because this. It it honestly is because I don't. There's not like a ton that honestly stand out to me from from an album or whatever. There was uh, and honestly, I've been I've been so far away. Let me hold on. I'm going an album pizza. One's gonna pop up in my head that like I love. Not oh, Romeo. Okay. Not Molinos. Kachina, no. It could be somewhere other a part of Jersey too. If yeah, no, it, I had one in my head, but I don't know what it's. Maybe it's called something different these days. But yeah, Mezzalunas, they make good sandwiches there. Desal's was pretty good. Oh, I'll give you Trat. Trat, Trattoria, Ravello. It's just a local place, but like that's just a place we would always go to. So I'll give you that one. I'm, I'm, okay. But it's not the one in my head, and it's not coming up on Google searches, which is annoying me. But I'll give you Trat right now, Trattoria Ravilla. All right. If you could spend one day with a celebrity from New Jersey, who would it be? Derek Jeter. How is it not Derek Jeter? From yeah. Pequinac, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. or Pequinac, however you say it. Uh, I, I mean, probably won't. Yeah. I mean, has, how is it not Derek? If people say Bruce Springsteen. Not my exact type of music. Uh, he's maybe my dad, whatever. But no, I'll go. I got to give Derek Jeter the nod there. And speaking of music, who's one musical artist from New Jersey that you would see in concert? Hmm. So I saw the first ever Bon Jovi. I saw the first ever concert at MetLife was Bon Jovi. Saw him there. So that was cool. Um, I think Train opened there. Jersey born. I'm, I'm typing this into Google, too, because I just got to pick one. Jersey born musicians because i don't know off the top of my head obviously there's springsteen sinatra right bond i'm you know what i'm gonna go nah you gotta go springsteen how do you not go springsteen gotta go yeah you kind of have to there and you mentioned them before you could give the same answer but best athlete from new jersey yeah i mean if it's not Derek cheater then what are we even doing here gotta be i mean that's like (laughs) that's the that's the guy that i mean it's right over my shoulder i got a little thing up here but yeah i uh yeah, Jeter's my guy. Perfect. And finally, when in New Jersey, you have to blank. And this could be like you know, go to a certain place. It could be act a certain way. It could whatever you want it to be. When in New Jersey, you have to. I mean, you just gotta go down the shore. How is that? How is that not the answer? You have to go down the shore. 
whatever you do down the shore is your business, but whether it's a beach where it's the bars, whatever it is, you just got to go or the boardwalk. You got to go down the shore. How's that not the answer? Yeah, well, that's that wraps up that part of interview and hubs. Thanks again for coming on the show. Very happy to have you for everyone to learn about you before we finish. Is there anything you'd like to promote a plug or, no, I mean, if you want to read my read my stuff, uh, I'm Hubs, H-U-B-B-S on Barstool Sports. Twitter is Barstool Hubs. Instagram is Eric underscore Hubs. And you can listen to the – if you're a Yankee fan and you haven't given it a shot yet, go listen to the podcast. Um, although we're in a lockout right now, so we're kind of uh, making st- stuff up as we go until they decide they want to play. But, uh, yeah, you can find the short porch on any way you listen to the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, et cetera. So, yeah. No, I appreciate you having me on, man. This was a blast. And there he is. He's at Eric Hubs, and he's Jersey made. Thank you to Hubs for coming on, and thank you all for watching this episode of Jersey Made. I'll see you next time.